Hey guys, welcome to another video. Uh, originally, I was planning to do a little 58 build guide. Unfortunately, uh, my OBS crashed while I was recording it. So now it's a Lily58 slash corn build guide since most of my footage is with a corn now. All right, so let's talk about uh, the soldering techniques. Uh, they're going to be the same on the corn Lily58. There's minor differences between the two, but what can be done on corn can also be applied to the Lily58. So let's talk about the tools we need. Of course, we need soldering iron. Only we'll some solder. We'll need solder sucker. We'll need flash cutter. And we'll need screwdriver to put the case together. And tweezers. Let's talk about the components we need. Of course, we'll need a bottom plate. The switch plate. And the PCB is in the middle. Of course, we'll need switches. Um, We'll need keycaps. I don't have any on me right now, but the switches. We'll also need a microcontroller right there. We're using Elite C's. The TRS jack right there. That's how you connect the two halves. And the reset button right there. So those will generally uh, come with a kit except for the microcontroller. So a microcontroller is something you'll have to buy for yourself. Everything else comes with the kit. Again, hot swap sockets, those come with the kit. Diodes, those also come with the kit. All right, so uh, let's get into it. For PCB, we have the where you put the sockets and where you put the diodes. So to the corn, the corn is not reversible to the front and the back. The Lily 50 is reversible. There's no clear front and back. You can use whatever side you want. Just make sure you're making a left side and a right side. So let's do the diodes first. If you look at a diode, we have a black side and an orange side. So the black side will go where to where the arrow is pointing. You see this arrow? It's pointing downwards. So that's where the black side will go. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to go in with the solder, put a little ball of solder, left side, right side, doesn't matter, whatever side you want. Uh, you're just going to put a ball of solder there. Then we're going to go in with our tweezers and the diode. We're going to heat up the diode. I'm, I'm going to heat up the solder and uh, just hold it out in place until we get into a good position. So we're just adjusting it. Basically, you just want to heat up the solder, remove the soldering iron, hold in place the tweezers for a little bit, let the solder re-solidify. Until it re-solidifies, re then let it go. And then just do the other side. Just make sure you're making good contact with the diode and the pad. Okay. That one was a little bit scuffed, but uh, this one is a little bit goes a little goes a little bit more smoothly. So here, ball of solder. Go in with the diode and the tweezers. Remove the soldering iron. Hold in place. And then we will go in with the solder on the other side. Again, make sure you're making good contact with the diode and the pad. If you don't, uh, it won't work. The switch. Let's take a look. And a little bit too much solder on the right side, but it'll work. Now, let's move on to the hot swap sockets. So these are kale hot swap sockets. Um, corn is compatible with kale. Lily 58 is compatible with kale. Some PCBs aren't. You're going to have to use Milmax sockets in that case. 
So with the Lily 58, these sockets kind of snap into place, so they're a lot easier to do on the corn. You just you gotta use a little bit of force, but they do snap into place. On the corn, you kind of have to push down on the socket while you're soldering the first part. Okay, we're gonna do one part first, then the next part. So kind of push down on the socket while you're soldering. Again, just make sure it's sitting flat on the PCB and you're making good contact with the pad. Um, if you don't, uh, I encountered this on my little 58 build, your switch won't work. All right. So add more solder if you need, just make sure you're making good contact with the pad. Okay, let's do another one. So here we have another socket. Again, push down while you're soldering the first half. Make sure it's as flush with the PCB. Make sure you're making good contact and then you gotta repeat this uh, for all the diodes and all the sockets. All right. Now we're going to do our reset button. This will go on the front side. Uh, there will be an outline. Right there. And uh, we're going to do the same thing as we did before with like the diodes. We're going to put the ball of solder on one half. Then we're going to take the reset button with the tweezers, reheat the ball of solder again, and we're just going to hold in place until it solidifies. A little bit finicky it does like to move a lot and all right this part is very poorly recorded by me um what i ended up doing was i actually just flipped it over i couldn't solder it uh, from the front side so i soldered it from the back side it's a hole so you can solder from uh, either side if you want so i just flipped it over solder from the back side and there we have it. Next step is TRRS jack right next to the reset button on the Lily 58. It's in a little bit of a different position. It is in the corner. You just have to make sure the hole where you plug in is facing outside. So just put it through the hole then we're going to flip it over. Okay, we put it through a hole, then we're going to flip it over. And then we're going to solder from the back side. It's just like soldering switches, if you've ever done those before. Just make, some, make good contact between the pins and the pads. Again, the Lily 58 will have more holes because it's a reversible PCB, but as long as the TRRS jack is facing out outwards, you'll be fine. You can't uh, misorient it. All right, let's talk about the next step, microcontrollers. Got a couple options. We have Pro Micros, cheapest, uh, but they're flimsy. They can ruin your PCB. Run about nine bucks each. Use, Pro use micro USB. We're using Elite C's here. Uh, they're a lot more durable to use USB-C, 18 bucks each. You can also use uh, Nice Nanos if you want wireless. They run about 25 bucks, also, use, also uses USB-C. Downside, you're gonna have to use, learn how to use ZMK. There's no VIA, no QMK for Nice Nanos. So on the Lily 58, uh, because of the reversible PCB, there's four sets of holes, two sets of holes. Um, you want to put it 
the headers into the hole with the outlines on the front. Okay, this can be a set of holes with that are outlined in white. Um, so make sure you're putting them in the right hole. The corn's easy, there's only one set of holes. So what we're gonna do is gonna put it in, the, the long legs go into the PCB. We're just gonna solder one leg first. Okay, we're gonna solder one leg first, make sure it's straight. It's straight, it's straight on the PCB. So uh, that's good. So we're gonna do the same thing for the other leg, uh, other headers. good trick to do is just uh, put the solder on one leg and then keep the soldering iron on the solder and just push down yeah like that push down and it should go right into place so we're gonna flip it back over check it make sure make sure it looks straight and there you have it if it's not straight just reheat the solder and push so what we're going to do now is just repeat the process um, for all 24 pins. Make sure you're making good contact between the pins and pads all around. Um, you just want to see like a little cone shape around the, uh, around the pin like that. All right. So we have... One side of the components, one side with the logo. The logo side is gonna be up, facing upwards. So we're gonna put that on the front side of the PCB onto the short legs of the headers. Again, same thing, just gotta make good contact um, with the pins and the pad. Just gotta repeat the process for all 24 pins. Okay. okay, just keep going until we do all 24 pins. Again, just make sure you're making good contact. All right. So that's what it looked like. Last step. It's a little bit dangerous, a little bit annoying to do, but you have to uh, use flush cutters and snip the uh, legs off the long side, the long pins. So from the bottom of the PCB, so snip those off and we can put it together. All right, time for the firmware. So we're using Elite C's in our Low 58 and our Corn. So that means we got uh, two options. We can use QMK or we can use VIA. Personally, I prefer VIA. Very simple to use. Uh, very intuitive. It's got a nice little app. So that's what we'll be using today. So corn is called CRKBD. Right there. Click on the link. It'll download it for you. Lily58. If you want to use uh, Lily58 Revision 1. Okay. And we're going to use QMK Toolbox to uh, flash the firmware. So you download QMK Toolbox and then flash. So we'll need a USB-C cable if you're using Elite C's. If you're using Pro Micro, you'll need a micro USB cable. All right, so you just plug it in like that. Um, if your microcontroller has never been flashed before, it will should automatically be in bootloader mode. Mine has been flashed before, so uh, what you gotta do is you just gotta double click the reset button and it'll put in bootloader mode and you can flash new firmware. So you see, I already have uh, this downloaded CRKBD file. Make sure you're using the right one. Uh, I'm using this a corn right now, so I'm using CRKBD. If you're using Lily58, use the Lily58 firmware. And then you just click flash. So very easy. 
Uh, make sure you flash both sides. Okay. And after that, you just use Via. You can uh, use a key tester. And uh, let's talk about some potential errors and how to fix them. All right, let's start with the big one. Let's say you flash your firmware and the whole keyboard doesn't work. Uh, that's likely, it's likely that you uh, soldered your diodes in the incorrect orientation. Uh, the, the diodes, there's arrow. The black side goes to where the arrow is pointing. So if you did the opposite way for all of them, that's likely why uh, your keyboard doesn't work for the whole thing. If it's just one or two switches, then it's likely um, if they're a bent pin, so you just pull the pin out, see if it's a bent pin. If it's not a bent pin, then it's likely um, either, again, your diode is soldered in an incorrect orientation, so check that. Or the diode is not making correct contact with the pad. So just reflow, this, reflow the, dot, the diode solder as more needed. The other option is your hot stop socket is not making good contact with the pad. So again, just reflow the solder, add some more if needed, and that should. All right, so we've soldered everything on, diodes, hot stop socket, my controller uh, is complete. Put our switches on, flash the firmware. Uh, you, you can use it now. Um, but uh, I'm planning on modding this a little bit further. Um, to see if we can change the sound profile a bit because I find plate cases are a bit high pitched. Um, they're not very thocky. So uh, we're gonna do some mods. We're gonna do some sound tests in a later video. We're gonna put in a high profile case, which should uh, make it sound a little bit better. And uh, if that's something you're interested in, uh, please check that out. Um, thanks for watching. I'll finish with a quick sound test. And I'll see you guys next time.